at the blessing of the Holy Chrism after the communion of this morning's Mass, the bishop sings, When the sins of the world were expiated of old by the deluge, a dove announced that peace was restored to the earth by bearing an olive branch, the type of the gift to come, which has been manifested in these latter ages. For after the waters of baptism have washed away the sins of men, this anointing of oil gives us joy and calm. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. After the waters of baptism have washed away the sins of men, this anointing of oil gives us joy and calm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. We had a flood this Holy Week. We woke up, some of us did, on Spy Wednesday morning with our basements filled with sewage water and without any hot water to wash with. And for many of you trying to get to church, it was a matter of detours and delays. But for others, more seriously, it was a question of leaving their homes. And someone, I think, even died in the flood. We had a flood. One might almost be tempted to say, what a length. And what an ending to cap these 40 days of penance the best because the good Lord chose our penances for us. After all of the snowfalls and uh, the Passion Weekend blizzard and the more serious griefs of illness and of death, that flu that so many have gotten, which tortures us still with its lingering, hacking cough. And then finally, this flood. And all that we could say is Deo gratias. Thank God. Thank God? Yes, thank God, because it is a mercy of God, everything that the good God, the good God does in this world of ours is his mercy even when his justice stands most starkly revealed, it is his mercy. And we need to be able to rejoice in this mercy of our Lord, even in the toughest of times. How on earth can we find joy and calm except in the balm of the holy anointing, which is today vouchsafed to us. The first flood, which covered the whole face of the earth, lasted 40 days. That gives us the length of our Lent, which stands for the flood of God's mercy and the flood, too, of man's tears. After the first flood, and we should hope for the same thing, came the dove, the Holy Ghost, with the olive branch in its beak. That is to say, peace. After the flood of baptism, which brings death to the devil and sin, comes the dove, God the Holy Ghost, bearing the olive branch, true peace to men of goodwill and forgiveness to our souls and strength and joy. How much we need this joy and this calm in order to persevere in our fortitude in the practice of our holy faith. May the Holy Ghost this Holy Week, bring the olive branch to us, a few little 
oddly paired animals who are left, who have obediently marched into the ark, the ark of salvation. On your drearest days and when the water rises high, remember, for all your faults, you're on the inside of the ark. And on the outside is the flood, is death and destruction and sin and shipwreck. The ark is the holy Catholic Church, outside of which there is no salvation. It is not the new church. It is not the one world church. It is not the ecumenical church. Outside of this ark, you drown. It's not just a matter, as they falsely teach today, bold blasphemy, the impious lie. But well, you see, it's just a detour. You might, it might take you a little bit longer. It's not the best road to go, you know, but you'll still get there. We'll all meet in heaven, won't we? And have a laugh over our little differences here on earth. Those are all lies to get you out into the sewage water so that you may drown in the filth of your sins. Resist. Say no to that temptation. It's been a long time that we've been cooped up in our ark, hasn't it? Far longer than 40 days. And sometimes we just want to break free, take our chances, jump off, go for a little swim, See what it's like with the rest of humanity who are in the, in the drink drowning. But please say no for the sake of the good God who sends a flood of blood at Calvary and a flood of grace at this and every holy mass and at all seven of the sacraments. What happens when there's a flood? Why, any more today, of course, is a matter for the federal government to come in. Our tax dollars at work, uh, FEMA and some brownie or another who will be doing, of course, a good job. And there will be a tremendous amount of waste and an awful lot of corruption. And somebody will get rich and the poor people somehow won't quite get a fair shake out of it. And, of course, there's the flood insurance to be bought these days. What did they used to do in the old days? Why, for soul insurance, for salvation insurance, sinners would join saints and under the tutelage of Holy Mother Church, seeing Christ in the least of their brethren, they would organize true charity and relief efforts for the love of God. What do you do when there's a flood? Well, one of the things that's done is to take up some kind of a collection of food and of medicine and send it to those who are suffering. So does our Savior for the flood of sin which afflicts us, especially today. He collects the food and the medicine and oil is both. Oil which is the matter for two sacraments of confirmation and of extreme unction, an oil which is used in two more, which are the gateway to other sacraments, baptism and holy orders. Oil, which the ancients considered to be a true medicine, not only for its soothing properties against pain, but also because when spread over a wound, it blocked the germs from getting in, contamination. And thus the good Samaritan comes and he pours out the oil of his sacraments upon our wounded souls. And also it protects us against the sun and it makes us slippery to the son of iniquity, the devil. Our Lord sends to us oil and medicine, oil which will deeply cleanse our souls and console us and rejoice us and sometimes in the sacrament of extreme unction, it will even restore, at least for a time, bodily health and strength. So powerful is this oil, which is blessed today.
It comes from our Lord, whose blood streams so plentifully through this precious fluid, the bishop prays at one point this morning. But of the three oils that are blessed today, you must know, children, the most noble takes its name from our Lord himself, Jesus Christ. It is called the Holy Chrism, which gives a true strength and marks us as belonging to our Lord in a particular way. And thus, the Holy Chrism is used at our baptism. The third oil is that of the holy oil or the oil of catechumens that is used again at baptism and also to to ordain priests. It is the chrism along with the holy oil which is poured on Saturday into the baptismal font so as to give that water its regenerative powers of grace. Now, oil is also considered to be food, specifically the preparation for food. If you don't want to burn something and you want it to mix well, you will put a little bit of good quality oil into it. So to the our Lord, through Holy Mother Church, puts into your souls when you're quite young still, this oil which prepares you to be fed with the bread of angels. The oil at your holy baptism, and the holy oil again, the chrism at your confirmation. Even extreme unction is a preparation for the last rites, for our last holy communion or our viaticum. Now, very often when you get a prescription, they'll tell you, they give you probably more information now at a pharmacy than you really need to know, but if you read it carefully, they'll usually say, to be taken with food so that the strong medicine doesn't hurt your tummy, but rather helps you to get better in a hurry. So, too, is the medicine of the soul to be taken with, by means of, food. We often forget, still today, that the Blessed Sacrament, and today is the birthday of the Blessed Sacrament, which we greet with crashing bells, and then with solemn silence. That the blessed sacrament is the medicina salutis. It is the medicine of health for soul and even for body. It is not the premium virtutis. It is not the reward of virtue. That will come in heaven. As long as our souls are not dead by mortal sin and we have at least some sorrow for our wretched venial sins, To be a wretch is someone who's really ungrateful. And when we persist in venial sins, uh, we show ourselves to be so ungrateful. But if we're sorry, why then we want to line up to take a medicine which is not bitter, but sweet, which is at the same time food, which will strengthen our souls, which is given to us today. We weak, sinful human beings are all the time drowning, all the time getting caught in traffic jams of detours, all the time in danger of shipwreck. Now today, when we see how many, how few are the animals that were paired with in God's ark, it's such a temptation to want to open up the hatch and just jump out and join everybody else. But they are drowning And you must stay put until the end of the flood. For this, we need food. For this, we need medicine. And the divine physician comes and he feeds us and he writes out our prescription. But more than that, so that we may persevere until the very end of this life and chastisement, we need joy and calm. And that comes most of all with the holy oils. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.